Hello and welcome to today's webinar which is entitled Identify, Measure and Reduce the Six Big Losses. I'm your presenter Mike Hodge and my telephone number is 01274 599955. During today's webinar I want to give you a brief introduction to SimLogic and Traxis and then more importantly want to talk about the six big losses, what they are, how to measure them and how to reduce them and then I'll take any questions. I'm aiming to have all of this done within the next 45 minutes. As there's quite a few of you attending this webinar, uh, I've muted your microphones, but please feel free, free to use the pane on your right to text me or send me any questions that you might have through the course of this presentation, and I'll do my best to answer them. SimLogic was established in 1997 and has a long history of delivering automation and control systems as well as, as well as manufacturing execution systems to some of the UK and the world's largest manufacturing companies. We're proud to boast a couple client base such as Mars Confectionery, Amazon.co.uk, Aunt Bessie's, Greencore Foods, Royal Mail, just to name a few. Importantly, we're the UK certified implementation partner for a product called Traxis. Traxis being a real-time real decision support tool with an excellent wide and large customer base is now deployed in over 3,000 manufacturing sites across 80 countries and we are the UK contingent for this. Traxis is a complete operations and performance management solution. Initially designed just for performance optimization measuring metrics such as OEE, TEEP, mean time between failure etc. The product has evolved over a period of 17 years to allow it to also be used for, for functions such as batch performance monitoring, work in progress tracking, HACCP and task management, recipe management, as well as energy monitoring and cost control within your manufacturing process. It's fully scalable and fully connectable to your other business systems such as advanced planning and scheduling, CMMS or any ERP system that you may currently have installed. Thereby Traxis will work to complement any investment that you currently have in such systems rather than aiming to replace those systems. It's employed in over 3,000 sites in over 80 countries and is the global standard for companies such as Fiat, Merck Shop and Dome, Eli Lilly, McCormick's, Del Monte, Mars, just to name a few. If you need a complete list then feel free to contact me and I'll send you a list via email. So looking into the six big losses, I think we need just a little bit of a refresher or an introduction to OEE. Overall equipment effectiveness, in brackets OEE, quantifies how well a manufacturing unit performs relative to its designed capacity during the periods when it is scheduled to run. That's the definition from Wikipedia, but in simple terms the way I would describe it is basically if a machine can make a thousand widgets in a given time period and the machine only makes 650 saleable units then the OEE is just 65 percent. The purpose of Traxis and the purpose of the six big loss approach is to be able to look at the other 350 widgets that never got made and allow us to see where we can make improvements so as to be able to raise the OEE and reduce your losses and make your manufacturing environment more efficient. This slide shows a very typical diagram which I guess many of you will be familiar with. It's a pictorial representation of how OEE is categorised into its main segments of availability, performance and quality losses. For those of you that haven't seen this before I'll just quickly identify the, the main elements of this diagram. The yellow bar at the top represents total available time, so typically in a manufacturing organisation if you took a production window, maybe seven days in a week, then basically what we're trying to do is get visibility of everything that happened within those seven days and try to account for every minute of that. And within every manufacturing organisation there's going to be an element of planned shutdown. This is the yellow box that we see uh, to the right hand side and basically what that allows for is time when we allow the machinery not to be working we actually plan 
it not to be in production. So typically there may be no product to make or you may have chosen to shut the machine down for planned preventative maintenance and so on. So when we consider OEE, basically we're just looking at the green bar which is planned production time. And during that green planned production time, in an ideal world, we would want to be producing at the design speed of the machine for every single minute of that planned production time. But the reality is that we simply can't do that. And that's because manufacturing encounters three types of losses, or three types of loss classifications. These are referred to as availability losses, performance losses, and quality losses. Availability losses describe scenarios typically where a machine is broken down um, or typically where a product change takes place and simply the machine is not available to produce even though in theory it's planned to be producing. Performance losses are described as minor stoppages so basically if a machine stops for just a few minutes um, or typically if a machine is just not running at its theoretical rate, so maybe somebody's turned the machine speed down for instance. Quality losses simply describe the fact that when you make product um, not all of it will be saleable and in which case we encounter quality losses. Also as part of the manufacturing process we might reject product as it's made, so typically at a check wear or a metal detector and so on and they're categorised as quality losses. And what we do in order to come up with an OEE figure, we simply take the elements of availability A, performance P and quality Q, multiply them together and we end up with an OEE factor. So what are the six big losses? Well the three classifications of availability, performance and quality can be further broken down into six further loss categories and these are the big six. Equipment breakdowns, well essentially we're talking about breakdowns which are unplanned, things like snap belts, guards broken, electrical failures um, that have an impact and last for time periods of typically greater than 10 minutes and basically they're not planned for, they just happen. Second one is changeovers, so with every product change we consume time and that's valuable time where we could be producing so being able to optimize change over time uh, yields precious results in terms of efficiency improvement. Minor stops and idling well this talks about the scenario where an operator might stop a machine just for a couple of minutes typically less than 10 minutes and this can be for things like real changes or for minor irritations with a machine or a machine jam and nuisance problems which just require the machine to stop and it can actually be a supply issue so typically if a machine is being fed and it's um, missing the odd product then this can result in a minor stoppage event. Reduced speed, well this signifies the event typically where the machine speed has been turned down or is not set to be run at the design speed for the machine and this can happen for a number of reasons it can be simply be an oversight, so an operator hasn't observed what the SOP is for a particular product, um, or it can just be a case that an operator or a shift has a notion that the machine runs better at a lower speed. Um, that's great if it does, but um, is a difficult one to kind of capture, and is an excellent thing to be able to see using an automated data capture system such as Traxxas. Startup rejects, well, we see these every time we commence a product change at the end of it when we're actually trying to get the machine running again the first few products may well be rejected due to quality defects and these quality defects are a cost of doing product changes and so it's good to be able to classify how many there are and be able to see trends and be able to see any rise or fall or any patterns that emerge as a result of startup rejects. Production rejects well these occur when we're in normal production and typically can occur simply because of metal detection, reject check wear issues, pack weights um, and so on, registration faults. Any number of reasons that basically mean that product is not saleable. They can also happen offline, so basically a product can be taken away, inspected, measured, weighed and so on and found not fit for purpose and scrapped that route. 
So what I'd like to do now is be able to move on to an actual demonstration using Traxxas. So looking at the Traxxas overview page, what I have here is an example factory. It's called OC Vitamin. Uh, Good for Life is their mission statement. And basically it's made up of a batching, tableting and packaging area. And everything that you see from now on is basically web pages, which essentially means that the operator interfaces and all the reports that you view are all via web pages. So it means that you don't have to install any client software on terminals on the shop floor or anything like that. Uh, which basically means that the cost of ownership and the cost of maintenance and the practicalities of upgrading the system and so on it's very straightforward and easy. I'm just going to hide the tree on the left just to give myself a little bit more space and I'm going to do away with the top menu as well and the next thing that I'm going to do is basically concentrate on my first big loss which is uh, equipment breakdowns and I want to go through the process of getting data into Traxxas This is a typical example of an operator interface. Uh, typically this will be a touch screen or a PC screen down by a production line. And Traxxas in the background will be monitoring the production flow of units coming out of a packaging machine or off the end of a production line. And when that flow stops, then basically we'd raise an alarm to say, my production has stopped, can you tell me why? So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to simulate that process because I don't have a machine connected. So um, I'm going to suggest that there's a label jam. And when I do that, uh, instantaneously, I see a red alarm there. And basically it says that there's a label jam which started at 3.59 p.m. And so far I can see that the duration is 10 seconds and I can see that accumulating. Now what the operator can do is he can go and fix that label jam and then come back and fill in the reason after the machine has got away or he can choose to fill in the reason now. Um, I'm going to assume that he's gone and fixed the label jam so he's gone and done that and now we've got production flow again. Yeah, it returns to this display, clicks on the alarm there and using a predefined set of buttons can select what the particular reason was for that label jam. So typically he might say well that's actually because of a misaligned label role and if he so chooses he can add some additional text to substantiate that which might say um, this role was loaded by the previous shift and now basically what we've done is we've tucked away that piece of downtime which lasted 30 seconds into Traxxas and it's there for future analysis I can clear that alarm just by hitting acknowledge and off it goes. If you want to with Traxxas basically what you could have is uh, an operator could return to this say every hour and I would have a, a sequence maybe two or three or four of these stoppages um, and the operator could select reasons for each one one at a time. Uh, it's important to note that you can configure Traxxas uh, for minor stoppages which basically don't throw up alarms meaning that stoppages of less than say five minutes don't require the operator to enter a reason and we will just classify that stoppage with some kind of default condition if Traxxas is connected to your control system or to your PLCs then typically we'll be able to capture things like fault codes or fault messages from your control equipment and so this um, filling the reasons is actually automated so just another point to note, uh, if the operator wants to have a quick look at a summary of today's shift then there's various real-time graphics available to them. So typically here we've got a bit of a shift summary that will tell me what particular product I'm running, uh, what the job number is and as we saw before the current OEE and then the metrics which make that up, the availability, performance and quality. Uh, we can also break that down in terms of actual good and bad units, uh, total units, total good units, total bad units and quickly look at our top five events for the current shift or for the current five periods. So here I can basically see that label jams are the biggest issue um, and I can also have a look at the breakdown for the current shift. One other slight topic while we're on the subject is that we have the ability to do some SBC analysis using Traxxas 
So, as I said, Traxxas is quite a scalable application, so we have the ability to uh, incorporate SPC functionality uh, into the product. As well as SPC, we also have the ability to keep a journal, which allows operators to enter notes and pass on information from one shift to another. So typically it gives them the opportunity to enter freeform text ensure, ensuring that we get good knowledge transfer between shift to shift. So what I'd like to do now is go back to those six big losses which is the title of this webinar. So what I have here is a bar chart depicting the period of approximately a week. Uh, I've set that up using typical date pickers at the top of the page there. And each bar represents a single shift. And what I've done is I've broken each bar down into its constituent parts, the six big losses, and then the actual OEE. Uh, it doesn't have to be shift by shift. It could be hour by hour, or it could be day by day, depending on how you run things down in your uh, facility. And I want to take you through each of the individual losses one by one. So first of all, we're going to have a look at breakdowns. So what I have here is a bird's eye overview of my production facility. I can see packaging lines one to four, and I can immediately see the status of my batching area and my holding area. I can also see that packaging line two currently has a fault with the labeler. And so if I want to find out a little bit more about the problem with the labeler, then all I really need to do is hover over it and I can instantaneously see some production metrics relating to that particular piece of kit. And importantly, part of the process of improving your OEE is finding out root causes. And so if I click on that particular piece of machinery, I can see using typical Pareto analysis over a selected time period, I can see that my biggest problem is in fact label jams. So okay, I know that I have a big problem with label jams, so what do I do about them? Well, if I click on label jams, it takes me to another view where I can actually start to look at label jams in con context with other factors. So as an example, I can actually look at label jams compared with a particular product that I'm running. So typically, USPM 200, I can see that I get the most significant level of downtime as, with regards to label jams. I can also see that of where the label jams occur, most of them occur at the drum. And basically I can also have a look to say, well, I get most of my label jams during night shift as opposed to day shift. And interestingly, I can actually look at label jams compared by supplier. So typically, if we go back to the earlier slide, when the operator is entering information about what is the cause of the downtime, if we ask them additional questions, who is the supplier of the label, or when we do a product change, if we enter the particular supplier of raw packaging and so on and so forth, we can break down data in this way. And here, typically, I can see that most of my label jams come when I buy my bottles from a company called ABC Bottles. So traditionally, what we may have done is focus this downtime on some kind of maintenance activity. We may have stripped down the machinery uh, and carried out some kind of engineering type overhaul on that machinery, when in fact it's quite clear that most of the problem is actually related to a particular supplier of bottles. And so what would have been an engineering fix has now become a procurement problem and it's a question of going back to our label supplier or rather going back to our bottle supplier and backing it up with some facts about how their bottles perform on our production machinery. So the next thing that I'm going to do is have a look at my next big loss category, uh, which is changeovers or product changes. And using this dashboard, I can quickly see, basically on a particular production line over a specific period, all of my product changes. So each one of these bars represents the time taken for a product change. And basically, I can actually identify what product we were changing on to. 
And importantly, when I look at that, I can see which ones are over the target. This black line here is my target. Uh, and which ones are under. Obviously, the ones, the product changes which took less than my target time are in green. And those which are over uh, amber, if they're only just amber and red, if they're uh, over by a great deal. And I can obviously, just as you saw in the last case, uh, do a bit of drilling in and I can say, well, this product change took an awful long time. I need to find out more about what went wrong. And I can immediately see that these last three steps, the material change, the setup and the startup, all ran over my 13 seconds, 7 minutes, 2 minutes, 26. And I can do that for each of my individual product changes. Here, once again, I can see that most of my steps were well ahead of schedule, but one just ran over slightly. And so by looking at the data in this way against quite a few product changes, I can then look in terms of an average time and say, well, basically, line clearance doesn't seem to be a problem, or at least it doesn't seem to be an area that requires any immediate focus. But everything seems to be related to uh, the last three steps, material change, setup, and startup. And if I was trying to decide where to deploy a limited uh, amount of resource, then I could look at this and say, right, OK, well, all my focus really needs to be within the setup area. And so that's where I would start to concentrate some effort in terms of reducing the time that product changes take. And so if you're wondering how we collect this data, then typically we would have an interface very similar to the one that we saw for downtime entry. And what that would do is it would present a list of tasks that the operator has to perform when a product change occurs. And in this particular case, what we can see is the actual time for a particular step incrementing. So we've allowed ourselves 30 seconds uh, in the case of this demonstration. And at the moment, we've taken 0.4 of a minute. And in a second, you'll see that go red because basically the step is taken too long and uh, on it goes basically so uh, what the operator would do is when they manually move on to the next step of their product change they would start the second step so the system would obviously then record that we're on the sanitation step and then the operator has the ability to select the first step justify why it took so long and optionally add some text if, if so desired so a very simple process, but, but what we can actually do is build up a picture of our product change process. And over a period of time, we can have a look and make various comparisons and say, well, why does that product change take so long? Why does it take night shift longer than the day shift and so on for a particular product or for a particular job lot? And on the process goes until we complete the product change. And so on the process goes, so the operator would step through the product change. And eventually the product change would be complete and would be back in production. And all of that data will be stored away in Traxxas. Just while we're on this page, one of the other interesting features about Traxxas is the ability to perform workflow management or ensure that tasks are performed. So typically, in addition to running machinery, it's quite typical that your operators will need to carry out HACCP checks or QC checks and so on. And indeed, to make product changes more efficient, it might be the case that they have to actually prepare materials or raw ingredients, which can be done prior to starting a product change. So in this case, what we have is actually a schedule of tasks that need to be completed. And so, for example, if we look at a HACCP check, which has to be performed hourly, we can click on there, and it gives us a description of the HACCP check which needs to take place. Um, I can attach an elect do electronic document to that HACCP check, and it will actually tell me what it is that I actually need to do. Once I perform that test, I can validate the fact that I've done it. This can be me typing in my name or it could be via electronic signature or a uh, RFID access card or um, swipe card and so on. And I can confirm that all of the various tests have been completed. And once that's the case then obviously that goes green. Same would be the case for various 
other tasks such as staging materials and so on and so forth. Going back to my six big losses however, I'm now I can now have a look and do a little bit of analysis on my minor stoppages and idling. Um, so once again for a given time range on a particular production line, um, obviously I have the flexibility to be able to specify any production line, any machine, uh, any product, any shift, uh, it's my choice really. Um, basically I can take a view here and have a quick look and see that basically the majority of my uh, stoppages on this particular machine tend to be in the region of around about 10 minutes, uh, 9 minutes, 8 minutes, and you can see that there's an awful lot of them. Uh, because I'm automatically capturing minor stoppages electronically, I don't, miss, I don't miss a single one. And basically what I can do below here is do, once again, a kind of a bit of a Pareto analysis and can see that the major cause of minor stoppages, once again, it's the good old uh, favourite, the label jams. But interestingly, for the time period that I've selected, I can see that I've actually lost over four hours of production. There's been 92 instances of minor stoppages um, attributed to this problem. And then the second one, tipped bottle, again, 47 minor stoppages equating to over two hours of lost production time. So it kind of gives me some scalars towards the problem. You know, quite often the problem is that the, a conveyor will breakdown or something and there'll be an hour's downtime and in the morning you'll have a morning meeting and there'll be a big inquest about how it happened, what we're going to do to make sure it doesn't happen again and these minor stoppages tend to get overlooked. They seem to be, they don't seem to ever get the focus that they deserve and this is typically a problem with paper based systems. Minor stoppages don't uh, don't often get recorded properly and so they're, they're often overlooked but often have quite a big impact on your uh, production figures. Here I can see that basically uh, my short stoppages which is the red section here um, what the effects of short stoppages is compared to large breakdowns um, Improving my short stoppages, reducing the number of them, will have a significant effect on my OEE and once again is a, is, a, is a critical big loss to be able to look at and get some visibility of. My next big loss is reduced speed. Once again Traxxas has a excellent interface and way of seeing the net effect of running my line or my machine at a reduced speed. Uh, typically here what I'm doing is I'm trending actual machine speed and I'm plotting that against the target speed for that particular production line. In this particular case you'll see that the blue is the actual rate and so there's lots of minor stoppages tucked away in there uh, as well as a few major stoppages and also I can see my red line there, the target, every now and again changes. And the reason that the target is changing is simply because when we do a product change then different products have different run rates. What's quite interesting is that basically here we actually do a product change, the target goes up but uh, the machine speed doesn't, which kind of indicates that the something maybe fundamental is happening there and it could be something as daft as the fact that maybe an operator has forgotten to change the machine speed. Uh, likewise, later in the day we're trying to run a product um, at a lower target rate and once again the machine speed is higher than the target um, which you could argue is fine but um, the net result of that may be that we have a quality issue. Uh, we may be kicking out more rejects um, and so a trend line is a very good means to be able to identify these losses. Uh, we have a theoretical rate above that as well so it's a good way of actually saying well this machine in theory could make X per minute and so on um, and identifies the gap you know when we're actually planning to run machinery uh, at this level when it could run that level bring some visibility to the fact that why are why are we planning to run the machine so so slowly um, as well as that we have other metrics so basically we can have a look at the net loss so our rate loss time typically equates to 2.6 hours so so the net result of running the machine at this lower rate 
in comparison with our target or in comparison with the theoretical can be identified. So the next big loss is production rejects and once again we can select a particular production line a particular date range and so on using the typical date pickers and we can display production rejects in a variety of different ways so typically you might want to look at uh, our quality level by shift for instance uh, and in that case we can see that um, our best quality is on orange shift and our worst quality is seen on blue shift um, so what does that mean for us well uh, it may be a training issue or it may be a skills gap so you might want to take one of your guys from orange shift and put him on blue shift for a week to see if that makes any difference and because of all because because this data is real time it means that you can make a change and see the results very very quickly indeed you know it might be an activity that you carry out in the morning and because it's real time you can see the net result of that in the afternoon typically I can look at my quality by shift um, over a period of time and compare that against the target and as you can see I've got uh, an instance on the 8th of the 7th where uh, my quality is an acceptably low level so I can drill into that and have a look at some SBC analysis and see exactly where things went so badly wrong. Other ways of looking at quality information basically we can loss, look at uh, our losses by particular type of quality reject so typically I can see from this chart that uh, most of my rejects are at the filler uh, then next at the labeler uh, and then post inspection so I can see very easily where most of my losses come from and where to, where to start focusing some effort and I might want to kind of have a look at that in terms of costs so I can I can assign costs within Traxis to each individual good item that we make and so con consequently when an item is rejected uh, we can associate a cost against that my sixth biggest loss is startup rejects remember that startup rejects are basically products or potential good product which is rejected as the result of having done a product change so it's kind of in the early stages of um, completing a product change and using Traxis I can benchmark that I can basically set myself a target and then have a look and count very accurately the number of items rejected after each product change and have a look at trends you know so typically I can see that um, I have a very badly performing uh, particular product and a large number of startup rejects uh, for the a SAFS 1102. The thing that you may want to do here is to keep your eye on that particular product change and then over a period of time have a look to see if that problem is getting better or worse. Uh, typically if one shift or another shift produces more startup rejects for a particular type of product change and when you do that you can decide how much focus to give it. So that's basically how Traxis can give you visibility to uh, these six big losses. Uh, what I'm actually showing you here are configurable dashboards. So um, basically, the, basically you could actually create your own dashboards within Traxis. Um, it's not as if it's a rigid set of uh, displays. Furthermore, Traxis can display data from numerous different sources. Obviously, Traxis is able to collect data from your machinery automation, um, but it's also able to connect up to your um, other business systems, as I mentioned at the start. And because of the way that the dashboards work, uh, we're able to represent data from those systems directly on these dashboards. There are many other features within Traxis. As I said, it's quite a scalable product and I'm not going to go into all of them now, but very typically from the OEE point of view, um, there's lots of ways of looking at the data, basically. So typically going back to uh, individual faults, for instance, or label jams, we can have a look at every single instance of a label jam and where we invited the operator to enter reasons and freeform text we could actually get to all of that here 
Um, and so we can put some kind of accountability to um, the reasoning and so on. Uh, in addition, typically you might want to have a look at various trends, so we might want to break down our packaging area into its constituent parts, OEE, quality, availability and performance. We've also got TEEP here, if, uh, if you're familiar with that. Um, and typically, for, say availability, we might want to have a look at our availability losses by particular machine, so unscrambler, filler labeler, case packer, palletizer, and see how that's getting better or getting worse over the period of over the period of a couple of weeks and so on. So um, you know, typically for our filler, we might want to have a look at the Pareto um, to see which is our top category. And then have a look at the trend to see if things are getting better or getting worse. Needless to say, there's functionality in there for um, maintenance. So if once again we want to have a look at things like mean time to respond, average time to repair and so on, shift by shift, well that's all tucked away in there. Uh, I'm not going to get into too much of that now. Um, and just a final quick one about uh, batch analysis. So. Typically, if you think about any sequence-based process, so whether you do uh, a batch makeup or whether you do CIPs and clean downs, um, then then Traxxas is able to monitor the performance of each individual batch, and then you can have a look at each individual batch one by one, and have a look why individual steps within that batch took too long. And typically there, for a particular batch, I can see that warming overran, coating overran, and cooling overran which is kind of part of the problem, but you might want to go in there and actually record some key parameters so we can have a look at the uh, temperature and humidity. And I can actually see why a particular step took too long, uh, because basically I required my temperature to be between 150 and roughly 170 degrees there, and it took so long to actually get up, and what that meant was that the step took too long. But that's for um, some webinars down the road, or if you have any specific questions, or specific in interest in batch performance monitoring, then please feel free to um, get in touch with me. So where does SimLogic fit in? Well, as I mentioned, we're the, we're the certified implementation partner for Traxxas within the UK. Uh, we've got an enormous amount of experience with implementing these kind of systems and also with the journey that you'll experience when you implement such a system. Uh, the graph here typically depicts a typical journey which shows that uh, you may be currently recording OEE uh, using a paper-based system um, or some other system. When Traxxas is installed what we often see is there's an initial drop in OEE and that's more of a case of the fact that we're taking a reality check uh, because we're recording things more accurately. All of our minor stoppages for instance and the reduced speed running um, we're getting a more of a reality check. There's a lot of interest in the subject right at the start, and so everybody's behind improving. So we see quite a gradual um, improvement in OEE over a relatively short space of time. And uh, the trick really is to kind of sustain that continuous improvement effort. And SimLogic will work with you just so that you are using the system to the best of your ability, so that you are seeing the data the way that you want to see it, so that you can visualize the problems that you, the way that you want to visualize them. So, as we discussed, Traxxas is a very scalable product and it can grow just as you need to grow at the rate that you want to grow. So, you know, if you're starting to use just OEE, if you're new to all of this kind of automated data capture, then Traxxas uh, can fit the bill. It can be a very lightweight product and then you can just basically add to it as your uh, journey unfolds. You know, typical examples of other things that can be included in there are labor tracking, process visualization, um, as we saw some statistical process control. If you're a pharmaceutical, then you might be interested in uh, 21 CFR part 11, so there's electronic batch records in there, uh, value stream mapping, and so, so it's a very, very, very scalable product. 
and very importantly it's all in one package so it's not a question of having multiple PCs and multiple servers it's literally one package so when it comes to upgrading Traxxas you're literally upgrading one package it's all developed by Parsec in the USA that's all they do this is not a product within their range uh, they've spent 17 years evolving this this package if you have any more questions relating to what else Traxxas can do then please feel free to contact me so now I'll open it up for questions uh, I'm going to take these from the pane on my right hand side and there's been quite a few good ones all throughout the course of this webinar so thank you very much for uh, participating uh, the first question I've got here is does it connect with SAP uh, the answer is yes Traxxas comes with a basically an API that allows you to create connectivity with with um, most type of ERP systems so typically SAP JD Edwards uh, APS systems such as Preactor and so on and so forth. And the next question is how does it get data from the PLC? Well Traxxas uses a combination of both OPC and ODBC so typically we can extract data using drivers from companies such as Kepware um, which will allow us access to data and memory tables within PLCs but also with lab instrumentation so if we're doing online or offline QC checks then we can take um, SBC type data from rheometers and NIR machines and what have you um, we've done a lot of work with taking data direct from check wires metal detectors and so on uh, to be able to do SBC analysis uh, can I export the data? Yes, all of the charts uh, and dashboards that I've shown you, there's an export to Excel function. Uh, you can get the raw data if you want to do something else with it. Uh, so the, yes, that's absolutely not a problem. How long does it take to deploy? Well, basically that can vary, but uh, we see Traxxas as a tool which is very rapid to deploy. Um, you know, typical time frames. Uh, range from probably one or two days to uh, maybe up to a couple of months depending on the complexity of the application but we would expect to be grabbing OEE data from a production machine within within a day or two. Is there a demo CD? Uh, well there is a trial version of Traxxas available and basically what we do is um, on a case-by-case -case basis we can uh, issue a 60-day trial whereby Traxxas can be used uh, on a pilot basis uh, that requires the installation of the CD and some configuration work from SimLogic but, um, but it's something that we can arrange if uh, that's something that you might be interested in. Uh, will Traxxas run on a virtual infrastructure? Uh, indeed it can and we've got several examples of where we're doing exactly that so not a problem whatsoever can it get data from SCADA systems yes it can you know examples would be simplicity uh, FT view uh, in touch and yes we can grab data from those places is there any traceability functionality within Traxxas uh, absolutely yes there is um, we didn't spend too much time on batch performance today but typically if we have processes which require an operator to verify they have the correct ingredients then we can use hardware such as barcode readers, RFID technology and that can all be integrated into Traxxas so we can have the operator work through a workflow sorry work through a workflow and use barcode technology to verify that the correct ingredients are being added uh, and typically when a lot is created or when a blend is produced we can use Traxxas to, to actually print the barcode labels or to program the RFID tags okay well we're coming towards the end of the time allotted and I very much would like to thank everybody for taking the time to join in with the webinar this morning uh, very much welcome any other questions via email uh, there's some questions on the pane which I haven't had time to answer so I'll go through and individually answer those by email if you want to have a chat with me or if you want uh, one of our guys to come down and have a look at your site and see how suitable Traxxas would be then by all means give us a call 01274 599 955 if you keep an eye on our website then we'll keep you updated of future webinars and we look forward to having you join in many thanks